It's 2021. Are you new to Dofus? Are you returning to Dofus? Or are you just happen to be one of the biggest fans and you'll click on anything with the word Dofus on it? Well, whatever the reason, this is a great video to click on because this is the Big Brother video to my big hit from last year, How to Play Dofus in 2020. I'll be briefly recapping some of the subjects that I covered in that video, but I will also include a link of it in the description below in case you wanna zip over there and check that one out after this and see a more in-depth breakdown about some of those subjects. I'm also gonna be covering a lot of new things that have been added to the game in 2020, as well as maybe a few things that I just didn't get to cover in that previous video. If you could do me a huge favor and just smack that like button for me to show your support, it would greatly help the channel out. And if you're new and you like Dofus PVM tips, guides, and gameplay, well, that's what my channel is all about. Consider hitting that subscribe button, turning on notifications so you know exactly when my videos go live. All right, let's do this. First things first, which server do you choose? Well, there has been a little bit of change on this in 2020 and a big change if you've come from further back than that. Long time ago, all the international servers were merged together so you don't see near as long of a list here. And I'm gonna tell you exactly which ones you should pick out depending on which way you plan on playing the game. The very first one here is the Echo server. If you are going to be running multiple accounts, this is the server for you. If you're not entirely sure what running multiple accounts means, it means that you're running two, three, or four characters all by yourself. And yes, you have to pay a subscription for each one of those. But if it is something that you're interested in learning more about, I will link in the description below a video I've made on how to run multiple accounts all by yourself. And it's gonna walk you through the whole process, giving you pros and cons of that. If you are playing by yourself and you want a well-populated active server, you wanna choose the Elysale server. If you want something a little less established, last year Jahash was added, which is also a mono account server, meaning you can only run one account on that server. It's less established, less populated, but maybe that's what you want if you want more of a challenge. The heroic and the epic servers are you get one life. If you die, you're dead. However, there's a slight variation between them. A couple cool things about these is they get a times three multiplier for XP and loot drop. So that's kind of nice. The two heroic servers, if you die to anything, PVM or PVP, you're dead. Your character is lost. A chunk of your resources and equipment is then distributed around in the monster mobs around there so other people may go fight pick up your loot. The epic server, when you die, your stuff just disappears. But the big thing here is you don't die permanently from PVP action. So if you wanted to still do some PVP and not risk losing your character, that's the one you would want to choose. All right, next on the list, which class do you pick? Well, there are 18 very unique classes. Every one of them played totally different from one another. You'll notice up here at the top, Ankama has given them a star rating on their difficulty level. It doesn't mean how good they are or how bad they are. It's not like the three stars will always beat the one stars. It has to deal with the learning curve of those. They also give a brief description, and if you click on the find out more, you will get a list of some of their spells here. You, you can hover over top of those to get some details about those. They also kind of break down in a little more detail some more strengths and weaknesses of the class. Now, if you would like to know my recommendations for the best PVM classes for beginners, I will link in the description a tier list video that I made kind of covering all the classes and where I would rate them on a difficulty scale. So that's something you could check out if you're looking for another source. But for some quick recommendations, if you're brand new and you want some damage dealers, the IOP class and the Craw class are both fantastic. They're high damage dealers. This one is much more close range combat. This one is your archer, it's gonna be long range combat. If you're looking for a class that's more of a support type role, that's also still fairly easy. The Iniripsa is fantastic. It's pretty much a straightforward healer class. The Inutroph is also really good. They're also kind of like gold diggers. You wanna build them in the chance element, and hopefully you're gonna get a lot more 
more loot compared to maybe some of the other classes. Now, whether you're new or returning player and you're looking for some fun recommendations, some of my favorite classes right now is the Eliotrope, which can be very difficult, but I do have a video, again, I will link it in the description below, giving you a basic tutorial of basic portal usage for this class. That's what they work on, is you're casting your spells through portals, as you can see in the little video down there. But this class is a lot of fun when you figure it out. And the Foggernaut is my second choice for most fun factor that I'm having right now. These ones are built where they use tack turrets that you put up there. You can't control them, but you do get to place where they go. The tricky thing about this class, though, is they work for you and against you. So you got to be really particular about where you put them out because it might attack the enemy. It might attack you. So you got to kind of plan for that. And they got spells to kind of help direct the turrets where you want them to go. But it is a lot of fun. Those are my two recommendations for fun factor right now, at least in my opinion. But a couple more recommendations I'll give you. The Sacrier class is fantastic. It's one I've been learning here lately. Build it strength. Go strength build. You'll have a great time with this class. The IOP is one I recommended a minute ago too. If you go with this one, I would recommend going strength or intelligence. If you do decide to go with the craw, fantastic class, go with agility. They got a lot of spells that are gonna do really good, keeping the enemies away, doing great damage, stealing health, fantastic build for a craw. And then another really good recommendation is the Panda Wall. These guys are so much fun. Probably the easiest positioners. You literally pick people up and throw them where you want them on the map. It's a fun build. Both the strength and the chance are great options for the Panda Wall if you're looking for some ideas. Each one of these classes are a lot of fun, but the thing is to find the one that works best for you. If you're not enjoying the game, switch it up. Try a different class. And again, check out that tier video that I got linked below if you're looking for a more detailed breakdown on all the classes and maybe that will help you figure out which one of these you want to give a shot. All right, you create your character, you come here, and here is the tutorial. Now, I know what you're thinking. Should I do the tutorial? Is it really worth it? My opinion is if you are brand new, yes, do the tutorial. It doesn't take too long and it does a pretty decent job of showing you the very basics of the game. But the nice thing is you're gonna get some XP. You're gonna get a little beginner set. It's nothing fantastic, but it's better than nothing at all. If you are looking for more detailed on this, I do have a beginner guide that I made. Again, I'll link it in the description below. And I actually go through this tutorial with you and I will show you extra things that the tutorial itself does not show you as we go through it together. So if you're looking for something a little bit more than just the tutorial itself, feel free to check out that video and it'll give you some extra helpful information along the way. All right, next big thing, which element do you choose? Where do you build? Well, if you're a returning player, you may remember how it used to be important to pick the right class first because if you wanted to reset your element down the road, it was a big project. It's super easy now, you're gonna love this. You've got your points just like before you can pump in. So here's five, I'm just gonna put them all right here into chance. Now, let's say that I wanted to switch to intelligence. All you gotta do is click this little reset characteristics button. Okay, you get all your points back, you can put them wherever you want, and you can do that as often as you want to. So you don't have to be worried anymore about picking the wrong meta or trying to get too experimental with your build because now it's super easy to reset and go a different direction if you're not liking where you're going. Another thing that has changed is you no longer have to deal with spell points or spell scrolls. Some people are disappointed about that because you used to make money on it. I get it. But now the spells unlock at a predictable level for all classes. In fact, you can click this button here, display all acquisition levels, and it will show you when you will get all three tiers of each of these spells. Now, you might also be wondering, what's all this on the right hand side? Well, the way it works now is going from level one all the way down to level 90 is how you unlock your primary set of skills. After that, you start unlocking on the other side, and then you can switch between this one or this one. It's not necessarily that it's a variant of the spell that you had, it's an alternate spell altogether. For example, this one here is an agility spell. Well, if you are a strength build and you're like, I never use this, I have no purpose for it. Once you hit level 100, you can select this instead and have that spell available to you.
All right, another big topic that has kind of changed and evolved a bit is the wisdom aspect of the game. Back in the day, if you were a Zeller, you pumped everything into wisdom so that you could just steal all the AP you wanted from the people that were around you. Doesn't quite work that way now, kind of does kind of doesn't if you're a new player wisdom also helps increase the experience that you get from a fight right now hovering over top of this mob it says that i'll get 170 xp well if you pump points into wisdom this very same fight might give you 175 or 180 depending on how much wisdom that you have so then the big debate becomes should you be pumping points into wisdom to level faster so this is the way these break down now if you go to pump a point in into vitality, it will stay one point equals one vitality for the entire life of your character. For the agility, chance, and strength, it follows a little bit of a different system. It's one point to one point until you reach 100, and then it becomes two points for one agility until you reach 200, and then three points for one agility until you reach 300, and then after that, it's four points to one until you run out of points. You get five points every time you level. Now, I point that out because with wisdom, you'll see right here, it stays at three points to one right from the beginning, and it's always like that. Every wisdom point you pump into this, you will increase your XP by 1%. So this fight where you're gonna get 170 XP, if you put one wisdom point in there, it's literally going to go up to 170 it's not a huge increase so it comes down to what your preference is if you like those little bits of gains then yeah put some points into wisdom and you can get some more xp but in the end my preference is turn the fights fast if i can turn five fights at less xp faster than i can turn two fights at higher xp I'm gonna go the faster route. You get more loot, you get more commas, in the end you get more XP, and it's fun. You're turning those fights really fast, so it's fun. But it's that's my preference. So hopefully that kinda helps you decide, should you put points into wisdom, not wisdom? It's entirely up to you. But me, I'd pass on the wisdom, just grind out them levels. Speaking of levels, where do you start leveling? That's a big question too. Where do you wanna go? Well, if you're a returning player, I know the old tactic used to be you shot straight through and Carnum went straight down to Astro and you went after those Peewees. Well, I wouldn't recommend doing that anymore. The Peewees down there can do more damage than they used to. However, what I would do, especially if you're new, stay up here in Incarnum. They've remapped it. It's not as big and cumbersome as it used to be. It's a very nice, concise location. There's a lot of really good quests up here that teach you the game and the walk you through how to do things like professions and stuff like that. And I'll cover a little bit more of that here in a moment. But where I would start leveling is just right up here in Incarnum. You'll see that it's kind of broke down into different areas. Top right corner up here will show you the recommended level for that area. Down here in the bottom right, the cemetery is geared towards level 10. So this is kind of the highest end game level for Incarnum. Otherwise, stay up through here, fight mobs, drop resources, knock out these quests, and you're gonna get some really good stuff that you can use, and it's gonna get you off to a really good start for when you do leave Incarnum and you head down into Astrid. All right, once you are done Incarnum, maybe you took care of everything up there, maybe you just got sick and tired of it and you're ready to start the big boy stuff. You're down here in Astrid, where do you go next? I would start with the peewees, these little bird groups that you see around here. As I mentioned before, if you are a returning player, these things do more damage than they used to back in the day, so just be aware of that when you start. But come down here, fight these things, and what I recommend, try to fight the color of peewee that is your elemental build. The reason you wanna fight the ones in your color is because they're gonna drop the pieces associated with that element. So the chance, or the blue ones, are gonna drop the chance-based peewee set. Now this peewee set is fantastic, and the first set I recommend for every class when they first come out of Incarnum. You've done Incarnum. You've done the Astro Peewee thing. You got your Peewee set. What next? Where do I start grinding out those levels next? Well, here's going to be some ideas for you. What I would do next is come up here either to the fields and fight the flowers or over here to the left hand side and start fighting the Astro Forest area. Both of these are really good. This one's maybe a little trickier than here. Obviously, the level recommendations a little higher, but both of these are going to be a great next step. You can come over here to the sand beach as well personally i don't think the xp or the drops over there are as good as these two that's the only reason i'm not recommending them but if you're looking for something different these guys can be nice to go fight too after you've kind of cleared these areas and you're starting to get into some bigger fights then i would either come over here to the rotsier area by the quarry 
or up here with the gobbles. Now, both of these are going to do a lot more damage if they hit you, but they're really good XP. Up here, you can actually drop some gobble pieces and start moving your way towards that gobble set if that's the next thing that you want to do. But one last thing I will point out about everything that I just showed you right here, including the Astrid Meadows down here, all of this is free to play zone now. That's right, Astrid all the way up here to the Gobble Village, the Sandy Castle, and over here on the right hand side, all free to play. So you could try out all of this area of the game, all of the dungeons associated with those areas without even have to pay for a subscription yet. And that includes Incarnum. So you can get yourself a good long ways into experiencing the game without having to pay anything to see if you're enjoying it. But if you're enjoying it, this is everything that you have to look forward to. Dofus is massive and it's constantly growing and expanding. In fact, all the Pandala area over here just got a complete overhaul, which I will be covering shortly later in this video. But yes, if you subscribe to Dofus, you get access to all of this, but it's nice to know that you can try out so much content without even subscribing to the game. Next up, should you level professions? Another big aspect of Dofus is the fact that there are so many professions available. It used to be you could have three professions and three mages on your character. Well, now you can have them all on your own character. So should you level professions? Yes, if you wanna make some good commas or even just save commas, I highly recommend you make you some professions. But here's a couple pointers and tips I'll give you. The green colored ones are considered gathering professions. These are gonna be things that you can do just out and about, picking up wheats and cereals from the fields areas, picking up flowers and plants for the alchemist. Those are the best place to start because even if they don't sell for much in the market, they do constantly sell because people are constantly buying them. Also, it saves you money if you decided to start converting some of those into breads and potions so that you don't have to go buy those from the market yourself anymore. If you decide to move into any of the crafting professions, which are going to be the blue colored one, what I would recommend is pick one and stick with it for a long period of time. The professions all level pretty quickly in the lower levels. But as you begin to climb higher and higher, if you begin to try to level multiple professions at a time, you're gonna run into big roadblocks as you're finding your resources being more and more divided. So what I recommend, pick one that really looks interesting to you and then stick with it. You don't necessarily have to all the way to the max level, but stick with it long enough that you are crafting things that you can actually make some money on before you start trying to start other professions lower on your list. But in the end, if you wanna make good money in this game, professions are definitely a really good option for you. So I know what you might be thinking, are there any other ways to make commas? Cause I'm not maybe a big profession type person and don't worry, there are lots of ways to make commas in Dofus. In fact, I've got several on my channel. One big one that's kind of popular is a video that I made called Make Commas 10 Ways. I will link it in the description below, check that out. I've also got some profession guides that kind of show you the cheapest routes to make some of those levels. They are getting kind of dated, so I don't know how accurate they are anymore, but I'm gonna list some here for you as well. One option for you is this hunter. Now I know I just said you don't need to do professions and here I am under the professions again, but this one is the only one that works a little bit different. All you gotta do is put on a weapon that has the hunter attribute. And I'll flash an image of one here on the screen so you know what you're looking for. If you equip that as your primary weapon and you go out and fight mobs, I brought up the incarnum list here just so you can kind of see, cause that's where you have to start. You're gonna drop these meats. You can see the category there that is meat. You can drop these from almost any enemy in the game. The nice thing is, is this is something Thing that you are collecting passively as you play the game. And you've got two options. You can either then list these meats in the market as they are. They're, they don't do anything right here. You can't eat them to get HP or anything back, but you can sell those and people will buy them so that they can level their hunter profession or use them at other crafts that are available. The other thing you can do is you can go to these hunter workshops. I got one right here. This is just on the north side of Astro. And you can click on the bench and you can use those meats you've collected in turn them into edible meat. Now you can use them just like any bread or potion to heal yourself or restore your energy. Or you can also sell those meats that you've put into the edible format. Now, the only reason I bring that up is because in order to level your hunter past level one, which is where it starts, you have to actually craft those meats into recipes and use them. You don't actually gain XP for your hunter just by fighting, unfortunately. Now, I know what you're thinking. I don't want to level a profession. Why are you showing me how to level a profession? Well, the nice thing is, 
is if you just sell those intangible meats that you can get up there in the Incarnum area, those sell really well. So just go up there once in a while, fight a whole bunch of those, drop those meats, slap them in the market. You'll make some good money that way. However, my number one recommendation for starting to make comma, especially if you're brand new or if you're a returning player, if you didn't pay a lot of attention to it, getting up to those high levels. If you open up your achievements tab, you will find a whole slew of things that you can do over here, places that you can explore, monsters that you can fight, things that you've never done. And when you do these, you're going to see that you get a chunk of XP, a big chunk of commas, depending on how difficult the fight is. And if it's the first time that you've accomplished that achievement, you also get a big chunk of resources that go along with it. Just start working through these achievements, look at them, they'll tell you exactly what you're going to earn, and you're going to make some really good commas and XP and resources all at the same time. It's my favorite way to make commas. Another really good option if you want to make some good money and you don't want to do professions. A lot of cities, if you look here at the little map, will have that sheriff badge and it's called the militia inside the militia you can come up and click on these wanted posters you can click on the wanted poster and when you see this you just click search for who they are and they get added to your quest list and basically what you are doing is you're becoming a bounty hunter and you're going to go try to find this person out and about now they have different spawn rates and spawn times so depending on when you go looking it may be a while before you find any particular one but if you go fight them and beat them bring them back to the militia turn them into the person and you will get awarded those diplooms. Those diplooms that you collect, right up here is Astrup. If you come down here south, you're going to spot a lot of these temples. This is the Sram Temple. There's the Craw Temple, the Iop Temple. You can go to any of these temples for the different classes. Inside, you're going to find a temple merchant. You talk to them and select buy. And on the left-hand side, you will see these characteristic scrolls that can be bought with diplooms. The these things sell really well. You can take these up to the consumables market, put them in there, and you can make some commas that way. And the nice thing is there's no professions involved. Involved, or you can even scroll your own character if you haven't done that yet. All right, another great money maker that involves no professions. Come over here to negative four, negative 24. Go inside the Almanac's temple. Depending on how long it's been since you've been here, this may be completely new to you. You're going to talk to Anticlimax here, pick up the quest. And what he's going to do is give you a set of resources to bring back to him. If you bring him those resources, you're going to go into the back room here and talk to the temple that's associated with that day. Day. It's a pretty easy process that you'll figure out just going through there. Come back, talk to him again. You'll get a fantastic chunk of XP that scales with your level. So the higher you get, the better this becomes for you. Totally worth your effort. But you also will get a nice chunk of commas. Now, it depends on the resource that's being used. If you're using a really low level resource, you're probably not going to get very many commas. But if you're going to be submitting a high level resource, like something from Frigost, that stuff tends to bank you 30 or 40,000 commas when you turn those in, which is super easy. Now, if you're low level and you're like, wait, I can't go fight those areas, that doesn't help me out. Don't worry, if you step right outside this temple, you will almost always, not always, almost always, find these merchants out here selling the resources needed for multiple days inside this temple. So what you do is you come out here, purchase what you need, Personally, I'd zip back to Bonto or Astro to pick them up. Typically, you're gonna find them cheaper in the markets there. But if you don't want to go through all that process, buy what you need from these guys, go right back in, turn it in. It's super fast, super easy, and on some days, fantastic commas. All right, another really good option for you. If you don't like doing professions, you want to make some commas, come here to negative 25, negative 36. Go inside this building here. Inside here, you're going to be able to do what's called a treasure hunt. You're literally going to click on this chest. You're going to select the level that you want. Now, the higher the level, the more commas, XP, and resources that you will get. You select that. You're going to do a treasure hunt, find a treasure chest at the end. You do a fight with that treasure chest, and assuming you win, you get the loot. Now, I'm going to link a video in the description below that teaches you how to treasure hunt. It is a foolproof way. We'll walk you through the whole process even shows you a website to go to that's going to walk you through where to find everything pretty much everything that you're looking for all right here is another recommendation for you if perhaps pvp is your thing you can get into it using this coliseum sword crossing thing find a match go out there do some battles and you're going to drop these tokens that if you come here to negative 13 negative 29 talk to this person right here you can use these tokens to buy emotes 
pebbles, all kinds of fun, crazy stuff inside of here. If you're looking to make some money, these pebbles sell fantastic. These little bone things sell really good too because people want to level their pets and this is a great way to do that. But the pebbles are constantly being sold. Prices go up and down a little bit depending on how many is in the market. But if you want to make some PVP money, pebbles are where you're going to probably make that happen. All right, for you returning players, the market system has had a complete overhaul as well. In fact, bringing the map up here real quick, I will show you that most markets have been consolidated now into three categories. You got your consumables market, your resource market, and your equipment market, which is so nice. But when you click on the market, you will see that it's got a whole new look as well. Up here at the top, you got purchase and sell. So depending on what you're wanting to do, you just select that. On the left-hand side now, you can really fine tune what it is that you're looking for. So if you wanted a ring and you could select primary characteristic, you could say, I want a chance ring and I need it to be between levels one and 30. And it's gonna narrow down all the rings that have the attribute of chance on it. You can even fine tune it more and select vitality as well. Say I want vitality and chance. Now it's going to narrow it down to just the rings that have that on it. Then you can select that ring and it's gonna drop down and show you all the items that are being sold for that item. And if you hover over top of these, you will see the varying stats on the left-hand side. So it's a really nice user-friendly way for looking for specific gear, no matter what level you are at. Now on the sales side of this, here's a couple things that have changed that are really cool as well. If you select an item, let's say I wanted to sell this ax, on the left-hand side, it will now list everything that's in the market in the price that is there which is awesome. You used to have to go back and forth trying to figure out who your competition is. Now you can select your item, look at the competition, compare your stats with theirs, and then put your price accordingly. So it's a really nice way to be able to sell things now without having to go do a whole bunch of back and forth. There are a lot of really helpful features now in the market. And if you want a really detailed breakdown where I walk through the whole process with you, I will link another video in the description below, beginner guide number four, and that one will walk you through the markets and give you a lot of tips and suggestions on how to do that. All right, there's another thing that's been added to the game recently I want to show you because it's a really useful tool. I've actually brought it up a few times. You might have seen it. This encyclopedia is almost like a built-in Wikipedia right inside of Dofus. It's pretty awesome. So up here along the top, you got your major tabs. The BC area is going to be all the different. You can select the area that you want to look at and the zone of that area, and it's going to list the monsters. Cool thing is you can then click on that monster, and it's going to break down exactly what that monster has the potential to drop. Some stats about it as well. If you hover over top of it, it will show you the actual drop rate on there. Just a real quick tip in case you didn't know, anything highlighted with a silver bar around it has a rare drop rate and then the gold has a very rare drop rate. But this is a fantastic resource if you're trying to find something particular. You can come up here and type in a search. It's going to bring out exactly what it is that you're looking for. You can click on it that way. Very handy tool. You can click on the equipment and this sets out very similar to the market I was just showing you. Over here on the left hand side, you can select a category, what it is that you're looking for, and this on the right hand side will continue to narrow down. It will also show you if it's something that's craftable, only craftable, or if it's a recipe, if there's some recipes involved, if it can be dropped by a monster. This can be a really good resource too if you're trying to find something along that route. But you got consumables, resources, and cosmetic items all this stuff's very handy the one i tend to use the most though is this very first one the bestiary it's a very handy tool that you can use in a lot of ways Remember those moments of spamming Dragon Pig and Soft Oak trying to get that super rare, ultra, mega, once in a lifetime drop of a Dofus? Well, now you don't necessarily have to do that. You can actually work your way towards the Dofuses. If you open up your quest menu and select main quest, and right here at the top, green emerald, if you select that, bam, right there. This is how you work your way to the Emerald Dofus. It lists exactly the quest that you gotta knock out the Deep Crimson Dofus. You wanna get that one? This is what you knock out to get there. 
the turquoise dofus. This is how you get there. So the dofuses now are no longer based upon some super rare drop that you have no control over whatsoever. Now you can actually work your way to those, which is really cool. Some take a lot more work than others, but in the end, if you follow the steps and complete the quest, you will get these. If you're curious about how to get to some of these, I've got some guides that I've come out with so far, but if you follow my quest to 200 team, I'm actually walking through the main story of Dofus. We just got the Emerald Dofus. So if you follow along, you can actually lead all the way up to that. And I even have a video showing you exactly how to beat Dark Vlad as easy as possible and landing that Dofus, which is the last thing you gotta do. Idols and trophies, something that was added to the game and have been a fantastic addition. Down here in the bottom is where you would typically put the dofuses that you would earn. However, they could sit very empty for a very long time, depending on if you ever got those dofuses. Now you can put some other stuff in those slots called trophies, which are a lot of fun. Trophies have three main levels when you're starting out. There's a level 50 version, a level 100 version, and there's a level 150 version. These are all craftable by the profession artificer, which was also added the same time as the trophies were. Once you have the trophies and once you've reached the level requirement, you can put those right down here in the spot like you would a regular dofus, and it helps buff up your character. I believe they do have some trophies now that are above the level 150 mark, and they carry very unique attributes. So you'll definitely wanna read all the print on those before you just start trying to plug them into your character. Now, idols, if you look down here, with this little face, you click on that. Idols are something that you can add to a fight to make it more difficult. I know what you're thinking. Why would I make a fight more difficult? Because the more difficult you make the fight, the better the XP and the loot bonus gets for those fights. You literally can pump the hardest combination you want to in here and bump that stuff up to increase your drop rate and increase the XP that you get from any fight in the game. It's awesome. The trick is to try to find that sweet spot between making it as challenging as possible, but also making it not so difficult that you die. You also want to make sure you're not taking five, six, seven times longer to do a fight. Maybe rotating more fights more often is better for you. However, if you're shooting for a super rare drop, maybe sticking it out with a high drop rate on a a low fight is the best way to try to make that happen but that's what these are for there's a ton of these and again these come in different tiers you got low level tiers medium and high tiers another thing i'll point out is you'll see this thing here in the center called total score and right now i'm sitting at 136 over here on the right hand side shows you the score that you will get added to this depending on which one of these you put in now this total score though the reason that's significant is because there's achievements that you can get based upon this score so if we go back underneath the quest achievement section and select one of these dungeons. If you look down here at the Royal Jellies, you'll see score 45, score 200. It's referring to that idol score. If I can come in here and defeat these jellies, if I click on this, if I can beat these jellies and have an idol score of 45 or higher, I will unlock this achievement. If I have a score of 200 or higher, I will unlock this achievement. And yes, you can do these at the same time. If you come straight here with the 200, you will get both of those achievements at the same time. So that's what that's referring to is that idol score, that difficulty. What are you pumping it up to? If you pump it up high enough and fight a dungeon, you might get extra rewards for it. Okay, I keep talking about these achievements and I wanna show these to you in a little more detail now. Now, if you are a solo player, I highly recommend you check out this achievement list because it's a great way to get XP, commas, and resources. I know I've said that a few times. I'm sorry, I keep bringing it up, but it's really good. And I hope I'm getting that point across to you. One new feature that has recently been added that's really cool is this overall progress. If you click that, it's going to bring up a list of achievements that you are getting close to accomplishing. And one cool thing about this is you can look in the bottom right hand corner and it'll show you what you will get if you finish off that achievement. You can even click it and it will take you straight to that achievement in the list so you can see exactly how close you are. As you can see, I'm literally one rat away from having this achievement done and I've got all this waiting for me if I were to do it. Once you get that done, a new one would be put on the list for you to go chase after after that. Now I'm gonna show you a few things on here that are just really good for you to be aware of. I do have a video which I will link in the description below where I break down the achievement area in great detail. Now the overall progress was not a part of the system when I made that, so you won't find that in there. But as far as the rest of these, I go into a lot more detail and again, that will be linked in the description 
description below. But the three easy ones that I will point out right off the bat is exploration. The way this works is you literally just run on to the map area of a new area and you get the achievement point for that and you get a little bit of XP. If you complete the whole zone, this is in Carnum up here. Once you've completed all of them, you'll get a big chunk of XP. So literally just running around and exploring, not even getting into fights, you can be getting yourself some achievement points. And I'll show you why it's a good idea to at least get a handful of achievement points here in just a moment. The dungeons are what I just showed you a moment ago. These are really good. When you fight these, you get a chunk of resources if it's the first time you beat it with that character. If you are coming back and doing it with an alt, the only difference is you don't get the resources. You do still get the XP and you do still get the commas. And the last one that I'll point out is right here underneath the monsters. If you select an area, and then select that monster, it'll list all the enemies associated with that group. And basically what you gotta do is fight each one of these and accomplish a fight challenge that, you know, those fight challenges that pop up in the corner, accomplish one of those and beat each one of these. Once you have, you'll unlock the goodies at the bottom of that. Now, the reason I'm pointing out the achievement points to you is because if you get up to, this is your whole score right here. If you get up to 500, you will unlock a sidekick, a free sidekick. This knight that you get is a fantastic part partner to run around with. You get this knight, you can literally put it right in that slot as a piece of equipment. And what you have is a controllable character that will be the same level as you to go do fight. They're not as good as an actual other character, but it's nice to have somebody else with you if you're out there trying to grind some levels, you're trying to take on some bigger mobs. They're fantastic addition. Also, if you go to try to run dungeons for the duo of challenges, the sidekicks are very helpful in trying to help make that happen as well if you're running by yourself. At 1,000 points, you get two more. Again, they're not worth a whole lot because people get them for free, so it's not like you're gonna be able to sell this for a lot of money, but that gives you three sidekicks that you can get completely free just by playing the game and going after those achievements that are already giving you commas, XP, and resources. It works together really well. If you are not a quester, which I don't blame you, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but if you are not a quester, there are still a couple I highly recommend you pick up, but don't worry, they're gonna be worth it. The first one I'm pointing to is right here at Meta Munchkin. Now, I am inside the Astrob Inn, but this is not where you find him when you first start. Just north of Astrob, inside the Field Dungeon, when you go inside this barn, you'll find him standing there first. Talk to him and pick up this quest. Meta Munchkin's going to give you a quest where he's going to assign you a dungeon to go to. In fact, the Field Dungeon is the first one he assigned. When you fight and beat that dungeon, then you're going to go back and talk to him, which he becomes located down here inside the inn. He's going to give you a big chunk of XP, and I think he gets some commas as well. And then he's going to assign the next dungeon for you to go fight. You're going to go fight these dungeons anyways, so you might as well talk to him, pick up his quest line, and so that way when you do go fight those dungeons, you get an extra bonus on top of that. All right, and just like Metamunchkin, down here at 1, negative 15, I'm just outside Astrob on the left-hand side. Belina Thumb does the same thing. The nice thing is she picks the dungeons that are in between the dungeons that Meta Munchkin picks. So, and I touched on this a little bit earlier, but again, if you're not a quester, at least come here to negative four, negative 24, pick up the Almanac's quest from Anticlimax on the inside. Again, it's a daily thing. You just come here, talk to him, He's gonna give you some resources to get. If you don't own them, just come right here to the merch mode people, buy what you need, go in, turn it in. You're gonna get a chunk of XP. And on some days you can get some really, really good commas and it requires virtually no effort. And in the end, if you do it enough days in a row, you get a dofus for your effort. So that's a nice big plus too. All right, I'll show it to you. Look how beautiful it looks even just on the map. One of the big changes that occurred near the end of 2020 was the big overhaul here. The place looks beautiful. And if you haven't seen it yet, you gotta come over here and just explore it. Now to get here is different than the way it used to be, how you get across that bridge. Now I have a two minute quick tip video on my channel that will walk you through exactly how to get here. So check that video out if you wanna figure out real quickly how to get here. But Pandala now has new sets, new zones, new armor, new quests and achievements. There's even some dofuses that have been added over here strictly to the Pandala area. Fantastic zone, you gotta check it out. Quick side note for Pandala, if you by any chance are a returning player and you have a ton of Pandala resources inside your market that have a disclaimer at the bottom saying, these aren't used for recipes anymore, come over here to 21, negative 28, speak with this resource steward, 
and exchange. You can exchange those resources for current resources. They're not gonna carry a ton of value, at least as of right now, because so many people have done this that the market just got flooded with those resources, but don't just throw them out. You might as well come here and get what you can. Might use them to level some professions. That's right, you can control almost all summons in the game now. And I have a really quick video that walks you through the process. I will link it in the description below. It's a short quest. You don't even have to be subscribed to do all the steps and get the spell. So now we can all tap into our inner little Osa and control the summons like we always wanted to. <laughs> Here's something fun that you might not have been aware of if you're new or a returning player is you now have a Haven bag. Now I think you have to be level 10 before you have access to it and I think you also have to be subscribed. But you're gonna click on the little house right here and this is the Haven bag. Now this one is not how they typically look. You can decorate and customize these how you want. Click the little icon up here. You can't see it on the screen because my camera's covering it up but you can click on that. It's gonna bring up a menu with some different items that you can then decorate. There are also Haven bag packages and sweets for different themes that you can buy from the Ankama shop and just really decorate this place and make it your own. A couple cool things that you need to know about though. You can click on this little thing and it's a daily lottery. You can click on it and it's gonna give you a firework, some wrapping paper. Maybe it's gonna give you a scroll that you can sell. You can get some nice candies. There's all kinds of random stuff you can get on that. It's literally just a pull on a slot machine. So you don't know what you're gonna get. Another thing, You've got a chest now, so it's like your bank. You can put all the stuff you want in here up to a certain point. It does have a pod capacity. So unlike your bank, where you can put as much in there as you want, in here there's just a weight limit. But you can put all the stuff you want in here and it doesn't cost you any money. So if you're trying to keep the cost down inside your bank, you might consider keeping some resources in here. Another cool feature about this chest is it actually transfers between all the characters on this account. So if I'm on my IOP, I can put something in there, switch over to a craw on the same account and then access that chest to pull it right back out. Same concept as the bank, but the chest works the same way inside of here. And then the nice thing that also comes is you have your own personal zap and basically it works just like all the other zaps. The cost is gonna be calculated depending on how far away you are from the destination you're trying to go to, but now you don't have to zap back or use a potion or run back to a location so you then can zap. Just go into your haven bag, use your own personal zap, go wherever you want. All right, another cool feature that was built into the game in 2020, if you click on the little cart down here, you can now do almost everything that you wanna do from their website, from the game itself. You can shop the website, you can subscribe, you can ogrins, you can purchase cosmetic things if you want to, all inside the game. You can even use your codes and tokens and stuff that you've earned inside the game. So this is nice because it's way more convenient versus having to go to an outside source and log into your account there and do the stuff. You can do it all right here inside the game, which I'm sure helps with profits for them as well because it's more convenient. But just from a convenience standpoint, it is nice to be able to do this from in here. All right, one last thing I wanted to cover in this 2021 video is what is the end game like of Dofus? Because that's an important topic. You know, grinding up to that max level, which in Dofus, if you didn't know, is the level 200. But grinding up there is only part of a big game like this. Why am I gonna be interested in continuing to play beyond that level? Because once I hit 200, what's the point? Well, Dofus is a fantastic game for end game content. One thing Ankama does very well is continue to release high-end, end-game level dungeons. For example, Pandala just got a complete overhaul. They did a whole lot of work adding new gear and new enemy types and just even improving the looks of some of the characters that they have here. Levels range from 120 up to level 160 over here. This is part of Pandala as well, and it was released in sections. And the last section that they added, if you click on the earth over here, you can go to the Wukin and Wukang, and this whole area was created for the level 200. And trust me, I've heard that this area is very challenging, maybe too challenging, but it was added as well. So they had a large spectrum of things added for both mid and high level classes. 
Each one of those areas come with new achievements, new challenges. The idols that they've given you and those scores to shoot for are ways that they've made it to where even going back to dungeons you beat before have a whole new feel and challenge to them just because you're increasing the difficulty. Another really cool in-game content, and literally you don't want to really come here before level 200 because it's not going to benefit you too well, is this thing called Infinite Dreams. You just click on this little icon right here and it's gonna take you up to this new world where you literally are continuing to climb this ladder and it goes indefinitely. You can try to climb as high as you want. Maybe you can leave a comment below of what level you've made it up to in this so far. But I know that there are people continually pushing themselves and challenging themselves. And basically what you do in here is when you go in here, you've got four different bosses that you can go fight. They'll be on a random map with random enemies and they're big time buff. As you continue to climb the ladder, it gets more and more difficult. You can add aspects to it to buff yourself. And then there's also things that you can add to the fights themselves to make them more challenging as well. Inside of here, you can get some resources, some armor pieces and things that are only available if you climb really high in this dream. But again, it's end game content and it goes as far as you want it to go. And it's a lot of fun PVM content. Another really cool thing for end game players is the professions. The fact that every profession will climb from one to level 200. Now, obviously the number of people that make it all the way to level 200 are a lot lower than most people. So that means that's where you can make some really good money and really start trying to get some of those exo maged gear, which means that you're adding stats to gear that isn't actually supposed to be on it. Again, that's a very popular end game thing because you're gonna beef your character up in a way that kind of isn't supposed to happen. Now, ultimately the big in the game progress, one of the things that you maybe really want to shoot for is you are trying to get the dofuses. It's great that it's no longer based upon random drops or RNG. It's something to work toward. If you go to the achievements, under quests and select main quest and just work your way down through all of this content, you're going to be unlocking some really cool things to the game that require a lot of work. You can get yourself some really unique rewards, like here's a Haven bag custom layout that you can get only if you accomplish this. Here's an emote that you can get only if you accomplish these. There's lots of dofuses that you can get only if you accomplish these. There's a lot of content in here and you're gonna be going through the main story of dofus, which is a lot of fun because you're getting to learn about all that history and lore, but it's a lot of content that you don't have to be in game to do it all. But once you reach end game, there's a lot of it that you can chase after that you couldn't at lower levels. And I know I touched on this before. I am not a PVPer, but I know PVP is a huge portion of dofus there are lots of people that are very competitive about that so if that's your cup of tea there is a ton of content available for you if you'd like to pvp if you know of some end game content that i didn't cover that's worth noting leave it in the comments below so other people can find that as well because knowing what the end game is like can make a big difference on if you even want to start a massive game like this all right i know that was a lot i threw a lot at you again i will include links in the description below hopefully for everything that i mentioned and if you do me one last huge favor if you haven't already and smack that like button it would really help the channel out and would mean a great deal i appreciate it and if you're new here you like dofus pvm tips guides and gameplay well that's what my channel is all about hit that subscribe button turn on notifications that way you know exactly when my videos go live until next time you all be safe out there and i will see you on the next one <laughs>